Good day viewers, this is Tech Mag TV News. My name is Stephanie Truta and these are the headlines. Two people die at Winky D show after police cause stampede. President gives green light to private transporters. CCC in by-election landslide. Zimbabwe suspends bank lending. Zimsek suspends June examinations. And now in our top story, two people have been confirmed dead over the weekend after police officers went on stage and grabbed the microphone from musician Winky D while performing at the Castle Tankard show. The police officer insisted it was now 10 p.m. and cut off the time of the show. The cut off time of the show had passed and he second handedly went on stage and pulled the microphone directly from Winky D while he was still performing. The angry crowd then responded by pelting bottles to the stage and causing chaos, which then led to the death of two elderly men. The deceased are the pair, Thomas Marila, 44, and Amelia Magoka, 43, both of Hatcliffe, met their fate in the stampede. In our other top story, President Emerson Nangagwa has buckled under pressure and has revoked the, the ban on private public transportation. This comes after his decision to have Zimbabwe United Passenger Company as the sole public transporter but that it badly backfired. Subco has been enjoying monopoly in the transport sector since 2020 after government gazetted statutory instrument 83 of 2022, putting a blanket ban on commuter omnibuses on the pretext of enhancing coronavirus lockdown measures. In a hastily prepared speech to counter today's purported, Nangawa said the government would introduce a law allowing private operators to operate and import public transport vehicles duty free. Zimbabwe Passenger Association President Tafazwa Golaiti welcomed the move, saying that Zubka monopoly was inconveniencing the commuting public. Describing the Zubka monopoly as unsustainable, the Zimbabwe Union of Drivers and Conductors President Frederick Mukumbani Ninga said Zubko has no capacity to service all routes and that is why the transport crisis has reached a tipping point. With the opening of its monopoly, transport changes will be a thing of the past. Citizens' Coalition for Change was the biggest winner in the weekend's by-election to fill the vacant seats following the recall of councillors by MDC Alliance leader Douglas Muzora. CCC, which was formed early this year, took seven out of eight wards with Zanapia retaining its Mount Darwin rural ward. CCC leader Nelson Chamisa was ecstatic, although he said the electoral playing field was not free and fair. Asked if the elections were free and fair, Chamisa responded that winning the fight when both hands were tied does not make it fair. The run-up to the elections was made by violence with skirmish reported in Chitungiza and Kariba. Zanupiv lost in Kariba where all three wards were 3, 4 and 8 so they called councillors re-elected. Analysts said while CCC was showing growth by winning urban wards which have been historically MDC strongholds, the party should move to attract more of the rural vote. And our other local stories, Zimbabwe has suspended bank lending. President Emerson Nangagwa has ordered banks to stop lending money with immediate effect on Saturday. According to the government, the decision was taken to stop speculation against the Zimbabwean dollar and was part of a raft of measures to stop its rapid devaluation on the black market. Zimbabwe reintroduced a local currency in 2019 after abandoning it in 2008 when it was hit by hyperinflation. President Emerson Nangagwa accused unnamed speculators of borrowing Zimbabwean dollars at below inflation interest rates and using the money to trade in foreign currency. The devaluation of Zimbabwean dollars' black market exchange rate has been driving up inflation. Year on year, inflation reached 96.4% in April from 60.6% .6 in January. However, the Zimbabwe National Chamber of Commerce says government's decision to temporarily ban banks from lending will create a parallel banking system with useless interest rates and no investor will be attracted to such an economy when lending can be suspended overnight. The Zimbabwe Schools Examination Council says there will be no examinations in June this year due to the disruption of the school calendar caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Some six spokesperson Nikhi Lamini said that the June examinations will only be reintroduced when schools revert to their normal calendar. Lamini said that Zimsek said the suspension of the June examinations has been due to the disturbances that resulted from the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Women Affairs, Community, Small and Medium Enterprises Minister CTMB Sonyoni has urged mothers to keep a hawk's eye on their young children as they become easy prey to unsculptured older men using money to lure them. Noni made the remarks on Saturday during the launch of the Council of Churches for Africa's Women Fellowship under the theme Parents as Good Shepherds, celebrating the warm, nurturing hands, love, heartfelt life, and caring minds. Noni noted that it was a cause for concern that hotels were full of young girls during the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair. She added that there is a need for women in churches to spread the gospel while also leaving the protection of children from immoral activities. Meanwhile, in an interview, John Masoe when Yenyezi Nome leader Herbert Sende, also known as Madibara Enoch, said they were grateful for the efforts made by the minister in helping them understand the effects of early child marriages and gender-based violence in the homes. This comes after government has reported that there has been a spike in child and adult sex cases. And now in our regional news, prices have gone up again in Mauritius. Prices for goods and services have increased in Mauritius. The increase takes place despite the riots against the high cost of living that shook Mauritius last month. From Saturday, public transport has become even more expensive. Bus and tram fares have gone up between 25 to 40%. The government has already invested 1 billion rupees to control food prices. The government is actively consulting with economic and social actors to present the national budget to the population in a few weeks. Mauritius offers many social benefits to its population. Education is free from school to university as well as health services and transport for students and senior citizens. And now in our international news, First Ladies meet as U.S. announces new sanctions. U.S. First Lady Jill Biden has met her Ukrainian counterpart Olena Zelensky in Ukraine as Washington announced further sanctions on Moscow. It was Mrs. Zelensky's first appearance in public since the Russian invasion of Ukraine began on the 24th of February. The U.S. imposed new sanctions, including visa curbs, on 2,600 Russian and Belarusian individuals in response to the Russian invasion. The Russian TV stations and executives from Gazapon's bank were also sanctioned by Washington. Meanwhile, G7 leaders said they were committed to phasing out or banning Russian oil. The meeting between the two lady, first ladies took place at a school which is kindly being used as a temporary shelter for displaced people. Mrs. Biden said that she wanted to show that the people of the United States stand with the people of Ukraine, adding that the war now in its third month has been brutal and had to stop. Mrs. Zelensky said it has been a courageous act to visit Ukraine when it was at war. She added that the visit on Mother's Day in Ukraine and in the U.S. was very symbolic. The two women later sat down and played with some of the dozens of children who are currently housed at the school, making tissue paper bears the symbol of local province. And now in our technology news, WhatsApp companion mode for multiple smartphones enters testing mode. WhatsApp is reportedly testing a companion mode feature with a few of its beta users that allows them to add a secondary device as a companion for their primary phone with WhatsApp on it. With this update, users can access the same instant messaging accounts on different smartphones or tablets. Earlier, WhatsApp launched multi-device support for all users that let them access their accounts on multiple devices simultaneously to send and receive messages on the app even without active internet access on their phone. However, the feature currently only supports PCs as secondary devices and is not fruitful for people with additional mobile phones and tablets. This might soon change with the release of the companion mode. According to a report by WhatsApp feature tracker WA Beta Info, WhatsApp is working on a companion mode that allows linking a secondary device to another registered WhatsApp account. The feature was first spotted at the end of April with a V2 22.10.13 beta for Android. But now we have more details about how the feature will potentially work. This has been TechMed TV News. Thank you for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe as we keep bringing you more top stories. We'll see you next time.